one of my favorite hacks for a typical hobby servo is to convert it to continuous rotation. You can buy continuous rotation servos. They typically cost a little bit more and they're not as easy to come by. Why would you wanna do this? Well, if you were going to wanna say control a robot, you could use a DC motor, but again, there's not a lot of torque here and they, these DC motors spin very fast. So you might have one of these, which is a DC geared motor. This is great too, but to run it forwards and backwards and different speeds, you typically need some additional circuitry. With a servo, all you have to do is a simple hack and you will have a motor that you can control forwards and backwards, vary its speeds, and it's something that you probably already have in your toolbox. Remember, you should have a bunch of these because for five to ten dollars, you can have a whole variety, whole different, all bunch of sizes, and you'd be ready to prototype almost anything you can think of. So let's go ahead and open it up and take a look. So we'll start by flipping it over, and almost every servo, at least everyone I've come across, has four screws on the back. Now, these larger servos cost a little bit more. I think this one was only you know, $15 or so. But the larger ones, you can modify much easier than the smaller ones. And the reason is, if you go online and you, you look for continuous rotation servos, they're gonna show you how to remove the wires of the potentiometer and solder in some resistors so that we trick the Arduino and the circuitry of the servo into thinking that the potentiometer is always in its neutral position or it's kind of its zero position for when, when it's reading it. And that's great. But to do that, you need to cut wires and you need to solder in resistors. And as a side note, if you're going to do this, you need to figure out the resistance of your potentiometer and then you basically divide it in half and you put some resistors in there. It's a fairly simple process. You will need um, high precision um, resistors, ones that have a tolerance of about one or 2% is the best way to do that. Those are also something you might not typically have on hand. If you spend a couple of dollars more and get these servos, there's the back plates off. I'm going to show you the big difference. The, in, in the affordable ones, like the one I was just showing you, like these, because they're so small, this shaft is typically the potentiometer. It's integrated into it. When you get a little bit of a larger servo, and fingers crossed this is true on this one. I have not taken it apart. And yes, some of these gears will fall out. It's okay. You'll figure out how to put them back in. But as you can see, here is the main drive shaft comes in here from the DC motor. And then this is the potentiometer and the potentiometer sits in the bottom of that screw. Well, guess what? If you want to modify this for continuous rotation, I'll show you a real simple hack. You kind of wiggle this board out. Now this looks scary. In fact, it is a little scary, but if you just take your time and pull it out, you'll see here's the DC motor. And then in here, Way down inside, you should be able to get that potentiometer out. There we go. Here's a potentiometer. Now, this, was, this is my easy hack. So most of the time, what you see on the internet is you're gonna cut these leads and you're gonna solder some resistors in there. I'm gonna show you a really quick hack. I'm gonna grab a pair of snips. Right? I'm gonna take a look at this potentiometer. Now that's one position. Here's the other position. And I'm gonna note that, and I'm gonna put it halfway in between, right? Set that potentiometer halfway in between. Then I'm gonna take a little bit of hot glue and squeeze it in there, essentially locking this potentiometer in that position. Okay, the glue has set up a little bit. Now I'm just going to take my snips. I'm just going to just cut that off. Now my potentiometer is set in that neutral position. I can put it right back in where it belongs. Leave the wiring in. Snug the electronics back in. Careful not to crimp those wires. There we go. Now that we have the potentiometer basically in a permanent neutral position, we have to make sure that there's no mechanical locks on this. And if I look at the top right here and I turn it, I can see this also only turns 180 degrees. So how do we fix that? 
Well, that's not that hard either. We kind of pop this out. Let's see where it is. Not on this gear. And it must be this one. So, probably just need to remove this screw. Yeah, that's it. And let's look at this gear. There it is. There's the mechanical stop. So we removed the stop from the potentiometer. We, we didn't remove the stop. Some of them will have a stop, but on this case, we didn't have to. We just locked it in its permanent position. And now we just want to remove that mechanical stop. So again, I'll just grab my wire snips and I'll just grab that little piece right here. I'll kind of bite it back and forth real slow. Don't just snip it because then you can potentially break this whole gear. So we just kind of grab it. And now we've removed that. If I put that back in here, put this gear back on top, or this, it's actually called a horn. Screw it back down. And here's where you gotta play the game of, do I remember where everything goes? Now I recommend you take your smartphone out and take a couple of pictures, but I've done this so many times. I kind of remember where these go. At least I pretend I remember. That, and this whole drivetrain kind of sneaks in there. Let's see if I can get it back. There you go, back together. Now we'll put the back on and give it a test. For the sake of time, I'm just gonna put the two screws in and call it a day. You're gonna to wanna to put all four back. Well, let's get this wired up. So, just like before, we take a red and a black and we'll use yellow again and we will wire up black to black, red to red, and yellow to yellow. And this time I'm gonna use the breadboard because I wanna show you something kinda of cool. We're gonna actually use the same knob program that we used earlier to demo the servo. So I'm gonna connect these to the, to the rails. And I'm gonna take this one and I'm going to connect it to digital pin nine again, because that's what the example uses. Then I'm gonna take this potentiometer, just like we did before, and I'm gonna hook this up. So let's get this back in the breadboard. And we're gonna use the same things. We'll put power to one side, ground to the other outer wire of the potentiometer, and then we'll use orange for the potentiometer signal. And we'll just make sure we get it in the right one. And I happen to know in the knob code that it's looking for analog zero. So now we have everything wired up. Let's test the board and upload some code. So I'll plug it in, fire up my Arduino, And first things first, example, basic, blink. Double check everything, uno, port's right. Okay, we're good, let's upload it. Make sure it's communicating. We'll look right here. Yep, it's communicating and it's blinking, so we're good. Now, let's open up examples, servo, knob. You'll notice a few extra things from when we talked about knob before. We have the same library, servo, servo my servo, declaring it, creating that object. Then we have this one, pop pin, it's a potentiometer pin. So that is going into analog pin zero. We have a value for that analog pin. And then we attach the servo to pin nine, which we've already done on our board. So everything's looking good. So let's upload this code. Now you can see the servo doesn't stop at 180 degrees. It's continually rotating. But based on where the potentiometer is, I can control its speed. That can be so handy. Think about a robot with variable drivetrain or a belt or anything, a testing apparatus. I can change its direction and its speed. All with a very few simple modifications. We didn't do any soldering. All we did was 
eliminate the potentiometer to thinking it's in neutral, and we got rid of that mechanical stop. If you have a different setup, go ahead and look it up online and you'll find lots of solutions to creating your own continuous rotation servo. So now that we've done that, let's get it right in the middle. There's a little bit of drift there. We could account for that in code. So let's take a look at the loop. The first one, value, analog read, pot pin. So that's the potentiometer's pin, which is analog zero. Then when it reads that number, it's actually gonna map another value, which is the servo library wants you to tell it from zero to 180, which essentially is degrees, right? Zero to 180 degrees. But when we read a potentiometer, we're reading 1,024 values, or zero through 1023, because zero is a value. And what we wanna do is map zero to 1023 to zero to 180. So halfway between them is exactly 90 between zero and 180, and then halfway between zero and 1023 um, is 512. So it maps those values. Next up, servo write, and it writes that value, and it delays 15 milliseconds um, to give it a little bit of time to catch up. So watch what happens as I turn this. So that is a way to make a very easy modification to a typical hobby servo to give you continuous rotation and to give you variable rotation and directional. I can go clockwise, counterclockwise, and I can go at all different speeds. So I hope you like that modification. And like I said before, go out and grab a bunch of these because it's great for prototyping. Their uses are really unlimited.